Hello everybody, Trello here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the dev blog for the TOG2 Super Heavy Tank, which of course is coming to War Thunder as part of the Dreams Come True event. Uh, you can see my previous video on what the event's about, uh, that will be linked below. And in the dev blog we're giving a bit more information on how it's going to be added to War Thunder, so we know it's going to be coming to rank 3. And interestingly, we're kind of getting two tanks because you will be able to choose between the initial prototype version, which is the one that most people are probably familiar with, large tank with a modified Challenger turret, and what is supposed to be its intended final form, which has a front-mounted howitzer and the side-mounted sponsons with machine guns. So this is quite interesting, and I think it works like with the M1 KVT, where there'll be a module that you can install or uninstall. So on the M1 KVT, you can have it as a regular Abrams tank, or you can have it as the disguised Soviet tank. And there are advantages and disadvantages depending on which variant you go for. So with the initial prototype version, you only have your main armament in the turret and a rather flat frontal hull, which of course is better for armor protection. Whereas on the final form version, you have that howitzer at the front, which can only fire smoke shells. And there is a bit of a gap there. So that might represent a bit of a weakness. And again, the side mounted sponsons, Obviously, the machine guns do provide a little bit of extra protection against unarmored enemy vehicles, but the sponsons themselves might be a bit of a weakness. So there'll be advantages and disadvantages depending on what enemies you're facing and your play style. Now, we're not told what the armor thickness is going to be in the dev blog, but people have data mined this, and it seems like it's going to be a maximum of 102 millimeters for the turret and 89 millimeters for the hull, which it's a lot less than I thought. I thought it was like 114 millimeters maximum armor thickness, but maybe Gaijin has access to more historical documents that actually give a thinner thickness. But again, we'll also have to see how it is when it actually gets released fully. And again, we're not told the max speed in the dev blog, but from people who have uh, looked at it in the game files, it seems to be about 14 kilometers an hour or around eight and a half ish miles an hour, maybe nearer to nine miles per hour. So it's not going to be a particularly fast tank. It's going to be extremely slow, probably being used as a bit of an assault tank against certain enemies or otherwise staying at the back of the battlefield and sniping with that 94mm gun. And I believe it's going to have a crew of eight, which should make it rather difficult to destroy it. And I don't know if that crew number is going to change depending on whether you've got the prototype form or the final form. Again, we'll have to see how that is when it's actually released in the game. And also interestingly, we're told that it's got two electric motors which are powered by a diesel generator. So I wonder if this will work like with the T1E1 where it has the same reverse speed as um, forward speed. Again, it would still be ridiculously slow, but obviously that would be quite interesting if that was the case. I, so far, this looks to be a rather good addition to War Thunder. Like I say, it's very good that we're getting two versions of this tank. So you're basically getting two tanks for the price of one, which is rather good. And again, we'll have to see how the final stats will look when it's actually released. But so far, this is looking like it's going to shape up to be a rather useful tank. Anyway, just a quick video for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.